move on to a circulatory system. The question is, why we need a circulatory system? And what is a circulatory system? So circulatory system is a system that provides the body with oxygen, nutrients, hormones, or all the essential things that a body needs to survive. And it also gets rid of the waste products. But why do we need a circulatory system? We need a circulatory system because we need constant supply of all these nutrients. And circulatory system consists of three components, a pumping organ, an organ that pumps the transporting system, transporting medium. Transporting medium is the blood, which has all the things that are cells required. It is pumped by a pumping organ called the heart. And the blood is taken from one cell to another or from one organ to another to the system of vessels, which is arteries, veins and capillaries. So now we'll be looking over what is blood, heart and these arteries, veins and capillaries. Now, if you talk about the blood, the blood is made up of blood plasma and blood cells. So if you see blood, we centrifuge the blood, then the blood cells are heavy, they collect at the bottom, and then there's a the blood plasma. Blood plasma makes up 55% of the blood, and it is the liquid component of the blood, and it has all the things that a cell requires, like glucose, amino acids, hormones, waste product, carbon dioxide. And then the blood cells, they perform specific function, and there are three types of blood cells red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. The function of the red blood cell is to transport oxygen all around the body, and it's a special cell. Why it's a special cell? Because to carry out these special functions, it has special uh, adaptations, like they are in the form of biconcave disc, which increases the surface area for oxygen transport. They have no nucleus, so that they can have more room for the oxygen, and they contain the pigment called the hemoglobin, which binds with oxygen and carry it all around the body. Then you have the white blood cells. White blood cells are the soldiers of the cell. They protect the body from infections. They are made up of two types of cell lymphocytes. They produce antibodies and phagocyte, which engulfs the pathogen. And then we have the platelets. They are involved in blood clotting. They have fibrin proteins, which form mesh around the blood and prevents the blood from excess blood from flowing out by forming a clot. So I hope you will remember what are the different cells and their function and what is the function of the blood plasma and what are the different components of the blood. Okay, so now we will talk about the heart. But before that, we should know why we need a circulatory system. We need a circulatory system because we have low surface area to volume ratio. We are metabolically active and we are multicellular. Now, low surface area to volume ratio because we have a bigger size. As the size increases, the surface area to volume ratio decreases. And at such a low surface area to volume ratio, diffusion alone is not effective to meet the growing need for the body. Therefore, we need a circulatory system. Now, being metabolically active, we need a constant supply of oxygen, glucose, and nutrients. And at the same time, the waste product is also made at a greater level. So we need a constant removal of waste products. So we need a circulatory system to do that task. And being multicellular, we have lots of cells which are deep inside. So diffusion distance is too large. So we need a circulatory system to transport substances deep inside the cells as well. So therefore, we have this circulatory system. And the circulatory system we have is double circulation. Now, let me explain you how this double circulation works. Now, in our circulation, we have a lungs and the heart, and the heart is four chambers. The top chambers are the atriums, and the bottom is the ventricle, and our right is the heart left. So this is the left atrium, right atrium, left ventricle, right ventricle, and the body. Now, how does the circulation start? The lungs gives oxygen to the blood, and the oxygenated blood from the lungs, it starts flowing to the left atrium. The left atrium then pushes the blood to the left ventricle and then left ventricle pushes the blood out and it goes to all parts of the body. The, blood, the body takes oxygen and all the required nutrients from the blood and then it releases carbon dioxide into the blood and the blood becomes oxygenate, deoxygenated. This deoxygenated blood from the body is pumped back into the right atrium. The right atrium takes the blood to the right ventricle and the right ventricle then takes it back to the lungs so that it can pick some more oxygen and the cycle continues. Okay. Now, if you see the circulation, it is consists of two circuits. One, 
lung to the heart and heart to the lung and that is known as pulmonary circulation and heart to the body and body to the heart that is known as systemic circulation and both of these circulation together make a double circulation so that is one of the definition of double circulation that it consists of two circuits a pulmonary and the systemic the second way to describe this double circulation is this is circulation in which the blood is pumped to the heart twice in one complete cycle so in one complete cycle the blood is pumped to the heart twice it involves two circulation pulmonary which is between lungs and the heart and systemic which is the circulation between heart and the body the double circulation makes the circulation more efficient by preventing the mixing of oxygenated blood and helps to alter the pressure from the different chambers of the heart. So here you can see in double circulation, the oxygenated blood is all to the left side and the oxygenated blood to the left side and the heart can modulate the pressure. When it is sending the blood to the body, it can increase the pressure and when it's sending the blood to the lungs, it can decrease the pressure and that can only be done as it has a double circulation. Now let us label the uh, vessels. Now if to label the vessels, always remember anything that gets the blood to the heart will be the vein and anything that takes the blood away from the heart is an artery. So in the first case, the blood is coming to the heart from the lung. So this has to be a vein. And since it is the vein associated with the lung, so it has the word pulmonary vein associated with it. So the blood comes from a pulmonary vein to the left atrium. Then it goes to the left ventricle and then from the left ventricle, it goes to the body. So blood is going away from the heart. So this has to be an artery and it has to be a largest artery as it is giving the most difficult task of sending the blood to all parts of the body. So this is aorta, which is our largest artery. Then the blood comes from body to the heart. Again, it has to be a vein. So it's a vena cava. And then from the right ventricle, it goes back to the lung. So it has to be the artery. And since it is associated with the lung, so it is the pulmonary artery. So you should be able to draw this circuit and label all the vessels. And I hope this is clear to you. Next is we have this heart. Heart is a pumping organ, works all day and night. It has four chambers. Atriums are the top. So this is left atrium. This is right atrium. The ventricles are at the bottom. So this is left ventricle, the right ventricle. Ventricles are doing the biggest job as they are pumping the blood to a greater distance. So you can notice that atrium has a thin wall and ventricle has the thickest wall. And as compared to left ventricle and right ventricle, left ventricle has to send the blood to all parts of the body. So it has to send the blood at a very high pressure. So it has the thickest wall. Okay. And then the left atrium receives the blood from the pulmonary vein. It goes to the left ventricle. The left ventricle sends the blood to all parts of the body. So that's the aorta. The blood travels all parts of the body and come back to the right atrium through the vena cava. And from the right ventricle, the blood pump back to the lungs by a pulmonary artery. So you should know the structure of the heart and the labeling and the functions of all the parts. And I hope this is clear to you. Now, if you remember that in a circulatory system, we need the blood vessels that carries the blood all around. And there are three types, arteries, the capillaries and the veins. The capillaries connects arteries and veins. And what you can see in arteries and veins, the lumen of the vein is bigger and the lumen of the artery is smaller. On the other hand, the artery is surrounded by a thick muscular tissue, which is not present in the capillaries and veins have thin. So let's tabulate the difference between them and make sure you remember all these differences and able to write in the exam. Arteries carries the blood away from the heart. Veins carries the blood to the heart. Capillaries connect arteries and veins. Arteries blood flow at a high pressure. In veins it flow at a lower pressure and capillary flows at a lower pressure. So to withstand high pressure, the arteries have thick muscular elastic wall. Veins have thin walls and capillaries are one cell thick. Arteries have a narrow lumen, veins have a wider lumen and capillaries have a very small lumen. As the blood flows at a very low pressure in veins, there are chances that the blood back can backflow. So veins have valves to prevent the backflow of the blood. Arteries and capillaries do not have valves. Arteries generally carry the oxygenated blood except the pulmonary arteries. Vein carries the oxygenated blood except the pulmonary vein. And the capillaries carries both oxygenated and deoxygenated. So I hope you were able to spot by the diagram whether it's an arteries, veins and capillaries with their function. Okay. Now, since we have discussed the heart 
uh, we there are a lot of problems that can come up with the heart and they are known as coronary heart diseases now what are coronary heart diseases if there's a problem in a coronary artery what's a coronary artery it is an artery that it's the branch of the aorta that supplies the blood to the heart and if these arteries become narrow why they become narrow you can see this is a normal coronary artery and in the coronary artery there is a plague that is deposited what is a plague it is a fatty materials like cholesterol which get deposited it narrows the artery the narrowed artery reduces the blood flow to the heart the blood flow to the heart is reduced the heart do not get enough oxygen it can cause heart pain chest pain and heart attack so this is what is the plague deposition that happens in a coronary artery now how we can improve that we can insert a stent a stent is placed which has a balloon with it into the block artery the balloon is inflated and the balloon opens the blocked artery and a mesh stent made up of metal is placed which holds the which holds the narrow artery and prevent it again from collapsing and people are also given the medicine called the statins which lowers the blood cholesterol and prevents the further deposition so this is one of the way and this is also known as angioplasty in which a balloon or the stunt is used to open the block artery but there are cases where the stunt cannot be performed due to maybe the blockage is too much or some of the problems to be that uh, a patient can have with the stunt then in that case we do a bypass what's a bypass see you can see that this is a blocked artery we give a graft and this graft bypass the block artery okay so there is a blockage in the coronary artery an artery graft is stitched to the coronary artery so the blood rather than flowing through the blocked artery it flows to the graft and it resumes the blood flow okay now there are another problems as well apart from this that can be associated with the heart these problems are like a leaky valves a person can have leaky valves maybe by time you know that the blood flows at a very high pressure so the person can develop leaky valves so due to increase pressure of blood flow the valve starts to leak for that we have valve replacement where the valves made up of metals or polymers are placed or the biological valves from the animals can be used at times the person get irregular heartbeat why because the heart is controlled by the groups of cells present in the left atrium called the pacemaker which regulates the heartbeat if there's any problem with that there's an irregular heartbeat so we make electrical devices called artificial pacemaker which takes over the function of the natural pacemaker and they regulate the heartbeat then apart from all this problem the person can have a greater damage to the heart or heart failure in that case we need a heart transplantation or artificial heart which is not that successful but the research is going on but heart transplant can be done so these are all the non communicable diseases or you can say the problems with the heart and the uh, proposed treatment for the same okay now after the circulatory system we come to the human gas exchange system for the respiratory system which starts with the nose and then the air goes into the windpipe the windpipe is known as the trachea the trachea is covered by the ring of cartilages that prevents the trachea from collapsing and then the trachea bifurcates into two these two bifurcations are known as the bronchus these two bronchus enters the lungs in the lungs the bronchus gets further branched into the bronchioles and at the tip of the bronchioles we have greater air sacs called the alveoli where the gas exchange takes place and then there's a dome shaped muscular organ called the diaphragm which goes up and down to regulate the chest volume for inspiration and expiration now what is the function of the respiratory system is to breathing system is to breathe breathe is taking in oxygen and giving out carbon dioxide now for the air to comes in air always move from high pressure to a low pressure so since the air coming in the pressure inside the lung is low for expiration the pressure inside the lung is high if the pressure is low the volume of the lung should be high and the volume of the lung should be low in expiration how these volume increases in inspiration it is the muscles the ribs muscles they contract and the rib moves outwards in expiration the ribs relaxes and the rib move downwards the diaphragm it flattens which increases the volume and the air moves in and expiration the diaphragm domes up 
which decreases the volume and the air pushed out. So you should know what is the mechanism of inspiration and expiration and what changes takes place inside the lungs or the ribs for inspiration and expiration to take place. For gas exchange, if you remember, we talked in cell biology, there's an alveoli which has a greater surface area by having a special shape and being millions of them. They have a shorter diffusion distance by being one cell thick and they maintain a steep concentration gradient by having a rich blood supply. By all this fact, make sure whatever thing is there in the specification is crystal clear to you and do exam questions on this topic. Okay, so I hope you have understood this video well. If you still have any doubts, leave a comment below. We'll reply you as soon as possible. Or you can go to our website where we have 24-7 chat support, where you can post any queries before your exam and you can get instant reply. You can go to my website where you can find the notes of this as well. The link is mentioned in the description box below. If you like this video, then choose to subscribe to our channel and do not forget to like, comment and share this video. And if there's any specific topic you want me to make a video on, do leave a comment below and I'll make sure I'll put that up before your exam. Okay, so please go over this topic very, very seriously. It's a very important topic and I'll see you next in your next video. Till then, happy revising.